Hi, I'm Jade, I'm the Marketing Director at Greystone. Now, March is Women's History Month and International Women's Day also falls annually in March on the 8th, so it seems like a really good month to start getting involved in talking about the topic of women in engineering. It's a widely talked about topic, there aren't enough female engineers in the UK and we want to know what we can start doing as a community, as a society to encourage more young females into the engineering industry. I am privileged to be talking about this today with this year's Engineer of the Year, Alexandra Sasha Christan. much for joining me today it really does mean an awful lot to to us and to, to the industry thank you thank you for uh, the opportunity to be here today i am very excited to be a small part of trying to get more females into the engineering industry and specifically building services engineering industry because what are we now about 10 percent which is as bad as it was 30 years ago and it's an amazing job uh, I had so much fun in the last 25 years and I'm planning to have as much fun going forward. So yes, let's get as many girls as we can. So first of all, what I want to know is about MSTEP, um, the company that you founded and you know, what's it about? What, what, how did you come up with the name MSTEP and where do you see it going in the future? MSTEP was formed uh, in August 2020 and officially started functioning on the 1st of October also 2020. Uh, I got made redundant from my previous role as a part of the COVID uh, impact and the overall restructuring and uh, out of that MSTEP was born and it was the best thing ever. In fact uh, as the redundancies were announced and I realized that this is probably what's going to happen I started thinking about what was I going to do and I knew one thing that I really don't want to go and work anywhere else and I've been dreaming about uh, doing my own thing for I'm going to say almost decades um, but never really had the courage to make that step as it were and I had a great job uh, I was in the same place for about 16 plus years in a brilliant team uh, doing some really exciting things. I was doing a project as varied recently as the renovation of the United Nations headquarters in Geneva and following freeze art fairs around the world in London and New York and Los Angeles and I traveled the world. I had lots of fun. I was well paid uh, and I would have just stayed there uh, as it was. I got the impetus to leave and form MSTEP and I cannot be happier. It is such joy and uh, somewhere I read recently it was actually on, on a tea bag saying joy is the essence of success and I, and I think it's so true. Uh, I have enjoyed my job before but these days I wake up with a um, joyous heart and I start thinking about how we can make this better. So MSTEP stands for Minds, Skills, Tools, Environment, Planning. And right now, there's only three of us. Uh, there's Cristiano, who uh, we worked together in, in a previous place. And there's Fiona, who uh, we've been friends for very many years. And we're very different people. And we're building this thing together. And we're looking at it from different sides and trying to make sure that we not we don't repeat the the errors of the previous previous experiences because too often what happens is people branch out on their own and immediately get very busy and then just keep uh, repeating the um the systems that were in place in the in the previous places and so we've got this repetition of stuff that doesn't really work very well we we improve a little on on what's not really working very well well in the first place instead use the opportunity and reinvent and just um, what MSTEP is, uh, it's mind skills tools in that order. We are engineers. We are um, 
but clearly not just engineers are brainy, but engineers like to think things, think things through. Whereas we are too often in a situation where we're pressed into solutions just because this is how we've done it before. And those are one of the most dangerous sentiments in, in English language and in the world because it stops us being creative. The MSTEP is all about thinking out how we can best serve our environment. We're incredibly passionate about our planet. We are not getting involved in anything that isn't, hasn't got a very strong uh, low energy and zero carbon aspiration. And we're working a lot with the communities as well, trying to kind of bring everybody up with us. Uh, but most of all, we are hoping to create a joyous space for, for, for everyone to, to thrive and to create a, um, a, a path for themselves. Oh, and one more thing on MSTEP. We're never, ever going to have a timesheet in a however brief or however long history because we want our people to focus on their output, to focus on what they're going to create, not to focus how they're going to justify their time. And so I have to say this because it's, I think it's so important. That's, that's so, it's funny you say that actually, Sasha, because um, we work the same at Greystone. We, we manage our own hours. We, we don't have, you know, set hours, set time sheets, and it works so, so well. Um, so yeah, that's really interesting. So let's go all the way back to the beginning. Um, what what first attracted you into engineering? What was it that sort of sucked you in and made you want to, to get involved in the industry? Well, first of all, I always understood maths. Maths was very logical to me. It never scared me. Of course, there's lots of maths that I could never understand. But I could see it. And then further down in education, I could see mechanics. I could understand how things work. But what was probably more crucial in my, my, my choice was the fact that I had an insight into engineering. My, my father was a, a, an engineer, a building services, a mechanical engineer, a building services engineer. And he loved his job. And he enjoyed his everyday life. He traveled a lot. He did some really exciting things. He came home, he talked about it. So, and then I was exposed to building sites when I was a child. I would walk around. I really remember the smell of fresh cement, fresh concrete, and I liked it. So I was kind of infused with, with this life from very early on. And also, um, I looked at my dad. I looked at my mum. She had a more, if you like, female perceived job. She was a, a, an archivist and she, she dealt with languages. And I uh, always thought he had more fun. So I thought I want to have a bit of that. Um, the other very important thing is that I come from former Yugoslavia, now Serbia. And that was a socialist that, that had a socialist system in place, which essentially meant everybody went to work, which essentially meant that both uh, males and females were regarded e equally capable of propping the system up. So at university and later on uh, working there as a graduate, uh, there was pretty much a 50-50 split. I started off in, uh, uh, with a big design and build contractor and in a design part of the system there was eight graduates, four guys, four girls. And I didn't know that this was a man's job until I came to the UK and um, I started working and people started asking me who I am and what I am and why was I a building services engineer and I was like well that's what I do and they were like but you're a girl and so on and so on so that's when I realized I was one of the very very few females uh, uh, females around and this is what we're trying to change here so the other final I think uh, 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 element which is really important to stress I believe is the way that the profession is perceived in the society so in Serbia, uh, as is on continental Europe, engineering is considered a valued profession, same or, or on par with uh, law and medicine. These are the three underpinners of the society, bring the same value, have the same respect and pretty much earn the same money. Uh, in here, engineers, are, with all due respect to everybody, considered the hairy bottom people who, uh, quote unquote, come to fix your washing machine which is fine, but doesn't give it a, an as attractive proposition to 
uh, a great many people. So this really needs to change. I think this is a part of our path here. To, to get it out there, to get it out that this is a profession for brainy people that want to do some exceptional things, like the buildings in our case, want to travel the world and have fun. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And you know, there, there must be such a sense of achievement as well. You know, when you're when you're involved in the these huge building projects, you know, w w whether it's a, a stadium or a skyscraper or what have you, the sense of achievement must be amazing, no? Exactly, absolutely. Seeing every building built is like a dream come true. It's an amazing sense of achievement. You start some with a tiny idea in lots of people's minds and then we all come together and it's an amazing amount of communication because believe it or not this job is all about communication about understanding what people are aiming towards and then integrating your ideas within and coming back with a better hole which is a building and you walk past it and it's there and it's that it, it's what jack built it's 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 truly amazing thank you for that reference so as we've discussed um you are in a predominantly male industry and you know, something that is, again, quite wi quite widely discussed in the media and so on is, is prejudice in the workplace, you know, sexism. Um, is it still a thing? Does it still exist? So as a female in engineering, have you ever experienced prejudice? Um, I don't think I've ever experienced prejudice, at least not strongly. What I have experienced is bias. And I hand on heart cannot say whether it was just because I was a female or just because I was from where I was from, my culture, my background, just because of me or a combined uh, 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 effort. Um, however, I have done, uh, I have gone through it and it, it's very heartbreaking to be overtaken by someone who you know is less suited to what you're aspiring to, which then gets proven down the line. Uh, just because they fit, uh, the, the, fit the mold better. And um, I attribute this to several things. A lot of it is unconscious bias. Uh, people like to talk to people who look and communicate like them, or at least they like to before we realize we're all a bit different. Um, and, and also historically, uh, there's, a, there's a view that females will go have children. I have been asked if I was going to have children, which is, wasn't very legal, but I responded to it anyway. Um, and um, there's this view that females don't ask for rewards in the same way that males do, rewards being financial rewards or a career rewards or, or so on. It's not true. We do. So, uh, yes, I have experienced bias. I have seen people promoted ahead of me. I had to do the chasing and it would have been so much better if I didn't because it would have let, it would have, I would have been left with more energy to do what I was supposed to do, which was, which was my job. So um, let's hope that those days are over. And, and I, th I think one more thing is very important to say about bias. Bias is not a female prerogative. Uh, bias is experienced by minorities and females happen to be a minority in the building services in the construction industry as do other groups of people as do lgbtq people as do non-binary people as do people who have come from places that perhaps have a different accent or a different culture so so we need to remove bias full stop and we need to go towards this social equity where everybody's got the same opportunity to um, give the ta talent to the society, essentially, because if we are fighting too hard for our place in society, the society is losing out all the energy they could get from us uh, 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 um, in, 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 in non-essential um, struggle. So I'm, I'm actually quite positive and uh, looking forward uh, uh, to the next stage because how the world has changed and is changing is giving me a lot of reason for yeah that's such a good point um sasha thank you for making that so off the kind of off the back of that then is the gender pay gap and you know it's, a, it's in every industry pretty much um but in the in the building services engineering industry there is still quite a large gender pay gap um have you have you experienced you know in your in your history have you experienced 
getting paid particularly less than your your male colleagues? Yes, I have experienced the pay gap uh, many times over in many, many different guises and circumstances. Um, I have been paid less than my male peers by as much as 30 or 40 percent and this has been a rolling thing in my career specifically since I came to the UK. I think it's more felt here than, than elsewhere perhaps in my experience and what would happen is I would I changed five jobs I think in, in, in my time here and uh, I would come I would negotiate the salary and then sometime down the line, I would find out that I am being paid 10, 20, 30 and as much as 40 percent less than people who have been employed before, after at the same time as me and that have since progressed more or less or the same as me and who are essentially doing the same or less ex uh, 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 successfully, um, successfully regarded job, if you like. And that is heartbreaking, it is demoralizing, it has no place in modern society because if the people that work for you have got their eye on their reward because they're worried they're not rewarded fairly, they will not have an eye on their output which is where you as an employer or you as the owner of a company want them to have their eyes on. I mean it's completely nuts. And also this whole um, slightly polished hush-hush system whereupon people are being given Chinese whispers bits of information where you're told, oh, just do this for me and I'll, I'll do this for you. Or if you do this for me, here's a 5k, 10k bonus and so on. So it creates a really bad atmosphere within the team because nobody really knows what's going on. But everybody suspects that somebody else is being rewarded differently. And as recently as a couple of years ago, I was looking at um, graduate salaries and there was a gender-based disparity there based on no merit at all or no merit discrepancy at all. And again, I'm going to say that a lot of it is unconscious bias, but also a lot of it is what the companies think they can get away with. And uh, to be fair, whilst females do ask for the money, perhaps they've got less of a culture of going down the pub and comparing notes, which is what guys do, uh, because they've got a longer history of being subject to, subjected to uh, 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 trying to get most out of people with the least uh, pay. So the females would less often talk to their mates and then go back to their boss and say, well, actually, I need to be paid that. And this is one of the things that we want to and that we are changing in Amstead. We're, we're very egalitarian like that. But it's it's about transparency. I never really want to be in a situation where people wonder how much their peers are paid or not paid. This all needs to be out in the open. Uh, uh, this is a job. This is what it gets paid and this is what needs to be done in order for that job to be uh, um, yours. And I am really sincerely hoping the next time we talk, maybe in a year's time, we've, we've successfully applied this system because so much, how you, what quant is the human energy, human energy units are wasted with people trying to get paid fairly and watch it and, and, and worrying about this rather than having all that energy and figuring out how we're going to cure cancer. So that's what I would like to say about that. Yeah, that, that's a point very well made, Sasha. Thank you for that. So in terms of, um, you know, what schools and what universities could be doing to encourage more females into the engineering industry, um, could they be doing any more? Schools? and the education system are doing a fair bit already. Uh, both my kids went through STEM, STEM is an, a, a phenomenally effective thing. We have people volunteering, going to places of education, talking how wonderful careers in STEM are. There are bursaries, there are uh, in, uh, incentives for people to go down the STEM line from apprenticeship to uh, to actual support and, and they release uh, through through work for people who have started who have gone that way which is all brilliant and uh, this all came out from, from a government initiative in about 2010 um, government employed the engineering council to figure out how many engineers will need in 2020 and the uh, uh, findings were a bit shocking because there was a um, shortage of about 50 percent engineers um, 
uh, discovered. And then somebody went like, oh, right, okay, so we've got 50% of people, of the population are female, let's get them into engineering. And that seriously is pretty much how the last 10 years went. So now, thanks to that, we have a developed STEM, we have uh, um, everyone from diverse background being encouraged into engineering, and that's all fine. I think the next thing needs to come from the top, the top of the construction industry, the top of engineering, building and building services engineering industry is to, and we touched upon it earlier, is to rethink how those jobs are sold. People don't work for companies, people work for themselves in order so they have a lot, in order to have a life that they want to have. This crazy notion that you work for somebody for X hours a week and you have no say in your life and you get paid less than you think you should get paid. I mean, seriously, this belongs in feudal times, not in 21st century. So once the industry and it's happening and it's changing and I like what I'm seeing on social media and some companies are really taking it forward. Even Google, who are you know historically is really anti-homeworking, are, are encouraging people to stay at home. So, in other words, now that after the pandemic, another positive in, in, in a global in a global pandemonium have established that just because people are not showing up for work, the company is not going to go bust. In fact, it might do a little bit better. Uh, we've got this uh, 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 acceleration of the understanding that people need to be given a lifestyle that they like and deserve in order to produce good work. You know, happy people, happy work. Miserable people, miserable work. And I mentioned it earlier. I mean, oh, I love people. I don't mind going to uh, work occasionally, but I do like working from home because it's my comfort and wow, no commute, uh, no sweaty bodies, no COVID on the tube. So I would very much uh, uh, prefer to work from a beach. And if I was 35 years younger, I would even more prefer to work from a beach. So uh, I think companies talk to people about the lifestyle they're going to achieve when working for you and the people will come with that. Yeah, completely agree with you. Completely agree with you there. Sell the lifestyle. Um, we do it at Greystone. You know, we, we don't have set working hours. We don't have a, a, an office. We're not tied to an office. Um, we can work from the beach, we can work from a different country, we can work from a, a cafe when they reopen, whatever it might be. And I think there was this big misconception before the pandemic that, um, you know, before everyone got forced into working from home, that if you give an inch, I'll take a mile. But I think work-life balance is so important and the happier somebody is, the better the results they will produce for you. So, yeah, completely, I'm with you. Yes, exactly. Uh, and now is the time. Now that we've learned that we don't have to be bound by offices and bound by commute, we can reach out, we can use what we've learned and we can reach out to everyone everywhere and give them a platform for their talent. Okay, so, um, you know, veering away from, from women in engineering a little bit, but another topic that was very widely spoken about before, of course, the pandemic and COVID-19, was Brexit. Um, how do you think Brexit is going to have an effect on, on your industry? Well, first of all, I am heartbroken about Brexit. Not just about UK losing the seamless connection with Europe and a lot of other world, but also about Europe losing the seamless connection with London, which is to me sometimes a, a, a worse tragedy. But we are where we are. Um, I'm going to say something slightly potentially controversial now. I think that the predominance of European uh, people in uh, the UK construction industry has somehow circumvented the MEP stroke building services consultancy part of it, or at least where I was, uh, because um, I worked for a large multidisciplinary multinational company and whilst there was a, a felt presence of European and other non-UK, if you like, people in the departments such as, arch such as architecture or planning or cost consultancy or structures, uh, not so much in MEP. And now thinking about it in retrospect, I'm kind of thinking, well, if you're an engineer in Europe, do you really want to be an engineer in the UK? I might be wrong. 
uh, because of all those things that we spoke about in terms of how it's regarded and how it's rewarded. So that's one thing. Uh, the other heartbreaking thing is with the advent of technology brought on by uh, uh, COVID, if you like, or advent of belief and trust in technology, we could now be working with people from anywhere in Europe, couldn't we? We could be work, working from people in, in Germany or people in Spain or the other way around. However, because the rules have changed, taxation has changed, borders have changed, we now don't know what the legalities are of doing that. So instead of MSTEP or any other company now being able to overnight employ somebody who wishes to live in, or I don't know, Croatia, uh, we have to go through a very complex administrative and legal procedure. And, you know, before Brexit, it cost about £5,000, cost the company about £5,000 to bring in anyone who needed a UK work visa, which weren't people from Europe. <laughs> now we've got that, and then we've got the complexity of nobody really knowing what, what's going on. So it is quite... Yes, demoralizing in a way, but looking on the bright side of it, because I like to be an optimist, is that perhaps it'll give this, this will give a push to the local talent to come across the building services industry um, and construction industry in general. If we can advertise it properly, maybe we can fire up some local bots who don't, uh, uh, who are not thinking about this now. So what would you say to young females that are maybe considering uh, a career in engineering you know what would you say to encourage them to to really think about it further well first of all it can be as glamorous as you want it to be um i mentioned uh, that i've been lucky enough to be involved with the freeze art fair and we did an opening in la um in 2019 and we had leonardo dicaprio we had brad pitt we had jane fonda we had a lot so you know it gets quite yeah you know, not not everything but uh, more than that, I think there's this really factually and historically incorrect misconception that the engineers need big spanners. Even Brunel didn't walk around with a big spanner around. He walked around with a pencil or a pen. We work with our brains. Uh, and somehow, throughout the history of specifically building services engineering, it became one of those jobs that is not very brainy because we're just putting pipes and wires where somebody else told us to. That's not what it is. Uh, engineering is for brainy people. Uh, geek is the new cool. I'm allowed to say this. I'm a geek. I've been a nerd all my life. Uh, look at Elon Musk. Uh, look at, if you like, Nikola Tesla, by, by, by whom the, uh, the Tesla car, the Tesla company is named. Um, look at Bill Gates. Those are all the role models. Those are all the techie, the geeky, the uh, engineering people, if you like. And this is what we need to put forward to the industry, not just girls. I mean, this is clearly, there's a, the girls are the largest minority. But I think uh, this is what needs to go to everybody. Because, um, and this is the, this is the rub. Um, when I started in this industry, in the UK, late 90s, um, there was like a dress code. And uh, you, you, as long as you, as long as you observed it, you could, as long as you appeared in a suit, that suit could be as, well, inappropriate as you wanted it to be. It could be mismatched, it could be crumpled, it could, but it's a suit. So we moved away from that, that's quite good. So that's really, really positive. Um, we moved away from the stereotypes slowly, and we are one of the last industries to do so. Uh, but we are moving away from the stereotypes. The stereotype used to be you need to look a certain way and behave a certain way to be specifically a building services engineer. What we need to do now is celebrate our diversity even more. And by celebrating diversity and by showing people that they can be, um, they can have a fruitful and joyful lifestyle wherever they want, and still be building service engineers in the UK will get there. Because if you think about it, uh, now, anybody can work from anywhere. I could be on a beach in Thailand, which I would very much like to do and still be talking to you. So let's um, capitalize on this sudden belief in technology, which pretty much works most of the time, uh, and, and, and get it out there and explain to people that they can live in a tree house in Hawaii and still work on a project in London. 
And this is what MSTEP is trying to do. We are reaching out around the world and we are basically looking for, when considering people of all walks of life from everywhere in the world, just saying, look, if you believe in what we believe, we'd like to collaborate with you. It doesn't matter that you're in Australia. It doesn't matter that you're out of Mongolia as long as you've got Wi-Fi. So I think this needs to come across. Uh, minds first. If you've got an engineering brainy mind, you can have a wonderful fulfilled uh, uh joyful career uh that that can take you around the world and as long as we put that forward i think that we can bring it not just the girls but all those guys that don't look like uh people imagined building services engineer to look 25 years ago just once again before you go um congratulations once again on your sibsy engineer of the year win that's amazing <laughs> Thank you very much. I am so pleased and proud and honoured and humble and all of the above. Thank you, Sipsi. And yes, it's, it's, it's certainly a big thing for me. Thank you. For that. So thank you once again, Sasha, for joining me today. I think we've pretty much covered everything. So um, yes, this has been a really good conversation. Um, before you go, is there anything that you would say to the young females out there today that are potentially the next generation of engineers? Girls, guys, everyone in between on all sides, everyone is insecure. Just because we're in a minority and are very self-aware does not mean that everyone else knows what they're doing. Everyone else has got a bigger support group which they can bounce the ideas off. So do that. Create support networks, create friends talk to each other. Communication is the most important tool that humans have. And by communicating, create a better world for yourselves and for everyone else. And there is one more thing that I've been uh, uh, mulling over for years now, and I think that it's worth sharing. So this is how I look at what is historically considered a career. First third is where we learn the ropes. Second third is where we create our own ropes. And then the third third is where we impose our ropes or our systems or a way of working on someone else who then does the same. So essentially we lose approximately two thirds of productiveness of each individual in the time when they're learning something that's not their thing and the time that they're teaching someone else that's not their thing in, 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 in turn. So what I would like to remind my generation, uh, employers, seniors, mentors, um, talk to the kids. Ask them what they want. The world we are building is the world that the generations are, that are coming after us will live in. It's not our world. Our world is done. Let's be supportive. Let's prop up. Let's not direct what needs to be done. And uh, yeah, let's listen to the kids. Thank you.